What is a computer? Well, before the concept of computers, people wanted machines that could complete human tasks, often referred to as an automaton. Some of these automatic mechanisms were designed to seem alive for reasons of entertainment or intimidation. But some were designed for more practical concerns, mechanisms that could imitate human tasks in order to save time. Though a core question emerges when we think of machines that imitate human action, where does humanness reside? Many believed our humanness resided in our faculty of reason. Aristotle was famous for reducing human reason to a mechanism via a process called deduction. That is shown to be the logical conclusion of a series of existing statements people agree on. And he marks a philosophical shift towards a clockwork view of human reason. His ideas were the foundation on which the study of logic was built. And in the 1660s, a boy in his early teens named Gottfried Leibniz was introduced to Aristotle's logic by one of his school teachers. He points to this moment when describing what he called his great idea. Instead of automating physical work, he dreamed of automating the work of human minds, mechanizing thought. Although he never achieved this dream, Leibniz went on to mechanize an important conceptual task of his day, calculation. Inspired by pedometers which could count rotary motion, he built a mechanical device that could do addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And this heralded a new era of machines that could perform conceptual work through mechanization. And around this time, a global industry was starting to emerge based on the creation and sharing of material goods at a much larger scale. This was accomplished by moving from craft production, one person doing one thing, to mass production in factories, many people working together to make lots of one thing. This era is known as the Industrial Revolution, and it led to a very pragmatic problem, how to make lots of things faster. Adam Smith, a British economist and philosopher of this time, was well known for the concept of division of labor. It's simple, but very powerful. To do this, the task of making something was broken down into a predetermined sequence of steps. Each step in the process is given to a different person. The powerful insight Smith had was that no matter what you are making, having say 10 people each working on a different task to make one thing is always faster than each person performing all the tasks to make it individually. Since each person is working on a smaller specific task, this person would stay in one frame of mind or context and wouldn't waste time switching from one task to another. This procedural view of tasks Smith had, we now refer to as an algorithm. This algorithmic view of manufacturing changed factories forever. Ultimately, it leads to a world where human work becomes more and more machine-like, but also it allowed machines to become more human-like. And this leads to a very famous insight. If humans are just following algorithms, then what's to stop them from being mechanized completely? This is an idea which drove Charles Babbage, who was a mechanically minded mathematician who was fascinated by Adam Smith's ideas of breaking up tasks and automating them. And Babbage takes the next big step after Leibniz in terms of mechanizing conceptual work, the multi-step calculations to solve unknown values known as algebra. And it's essential to realize that algebra is a powerful tool because it's the link between the physical world and the symbolic one. Imagine, for example, a soap manufacturer wants to make a travel-sized soap, so he needs to divide the regular-sized box into smaller, equally-sized boxes. And so let's convert this physical situation into algebra by letting x represent the side length of the big box, so the volume of the big box is x times x times x, or x cubed, and we are saying it must be equal to two times the volume of the smaller box. Let's call the side of the smaller box y, and now we have an algebraic representation of the situation. 
So to answer any question of the form, given this box, what's the side length of the smaller boxes, we just rearrange the equation to isolate y, so that y is a function of x, and plug in the value of x to get y. Algebra allows us to build statements, known as polynomials, about the real world and solve them in a mechanical way. But at the time, algebra was a human job. People manually wrote up big books called tables of values, which for a single function lists all possible questions, or values of x on one side, and all results, values of y on the other. And as soon as Babbage actually started producing these tables for the Astronomical Society in England, he was famous for saying, I wish to God these calculations could be done by steam. And that problem led to one of his great mechanical designs, a machine that could do algebra, known as his difference engine. Specifically, the operator would take some polynomial that needed solving and input the first few values of the table by setting a sequence of wheels. And when they turned the crank, the machine performed a cascade of additions and subtractions and stepped through each value of x one at a time and printed the results, completely automating a once complex and time-consuming human job. But his difference engine followed one specific algorithm. This procedure was baked into the mechanics of the machine itself. And this led to Babbage's final, most ambitious dream. A machine that can automate any algorithm, known as his analytic engine. And he envisioned his machine as follows. First, an algorithm is dreamed up by a human, and then written down on a series of punch cards, which held each instruction. Whatever these instructions are, they would be fed into the machine's central drum, and then the machine would follow your instructions. And this leads to an interesting question. What does his analytic engine actually need to be able to do? Well, he realized that no matter what your algorithm is, it's really just some well-defined sequence of doing and deciding. And in terms of what the machine actually does at any step is calculation. So his machine had a subsystem, which he called the mill, that could perform basic operations of logic, and, or, and not, and arithmetic. And in terms of deciding, the machine also needed to be able to recognize commands of the form if something, then something, known as a conditional statement. So that based on any given calculation, the next operation can take different paths, or branches. Lastly, the machine needed to be able to remember intermediate values during computation, so he included a memory which could hold 10,040 digit numbers. And it would output the results on a roll, just as his difference engine did. And with that, calculation, branching, and memory he had everything he needed for the machine to follow any algorithm you can think of. What's most important is that he fully decoupled the algorithm from the machine's mechanism. And that's what a computer is. A machine that can automate any algorithm. And this is when computer science is born. When the program becomes the machine. So the intelligence of the machine was put into the hands of the person writing the algorithm, the programmer. Although his analytic engine was never actually built, what he designed on paper was equivalent to a modern computer, but way ahead of its time. Up until now, people had understood machines as doing the thing they were designed to do, and programming just wasn't something the public understood. However, one of his protégés, a young Ada Lovelace, was famous for recognizing the more general power his machine held. She realized the rules the analytic engine followed were only limited to your imagination, how you programmed it. She famously noted that the machine could solve abstract mathematical functions, but it could just as well be outputting music. That is, the numbers coming out of the machine could represent anything. And very soon, this idea would take root flourish. And it leads to some interesting questions. 
What can't we do with a well-defined sequence of instructions? What's out of reach of a mechanical process?